Hello world and welcome to another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. A trip all the way over to Belfast Aldergrove. So on today's episode, uh, we are at a beautifully handcrafted airport, London Stansted, so I will post a link down below for that. I will also post a link down below for our arrival airport, uh, which is Belfast Aldergrove, because there is a beautifully handcrafted airport created there for us as well, and these are both freeware, so I highly suggest you go down below, tick on those, and grab them up. While you're down there, click that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and hammer that thumbs up button because you don't want to miss any of our future videos like this one. So in today's video, we've already done a couple other videos on the longitude. So we're going to make our trip over to Belfast today. And in doing so, we're going to be taking a look at the VNAV capabilities of the longitude and how to use it. So if you haven't seen our two other videos on getting the thing started and programming, programming the GPS, I suggest you go down below. I'll put links down below for those so you can check those out uh, before you watch this video. And this video is going to be combining both of those, so uh, now we're going to be making the flight. So the flight computer should already be pre-programmed, so we're just going to go through this real quick and get everything started up. All right, and by the way, if anybody has any questions uh, along the way, uh, just go ahead and post those down in the comments below, and I will be sure to get to those as soon as possible. Uh, I'm also going to be using another cool program today. It's a little add-on called the Luke Air Tool, flying under the Air Lingus tag. So we'll see how that goes, and we hopefully we won't get a crash. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and start that up now as well. So the objective here is to pretty much get this thing going. I'm not really going to talk so much but once we start our flight. I'm going to allow you to listen to the ambience and the Luke Air Tool. And hopefully, again, we'll make it there smooth. Now once we get to the point to where uh, we're going to enter some VNAV stuff, uh, I will get on and start talking to you about the VNAV and how we're going to uh, proceed with that. So um, let's get going here. So I want to get this thing started, so let's get some power to it. Yeah, notice we don't have available power right now, so I want to get that APU started ASAP. So to do that, Again, we're going to turn on some lights, let everybody know we are getting ready to go. System test. As you can see, uh, we had to move to a different spot here. Um, I forgot to load in the G3000, so I had to restart. Anyway, um, so we got the power on. Gotta go ahead and turn the pulse recog. Hit our emergency lights. Pause system test. Okay. And let's get uh, the APU fired up. All right, so we're just waiting on the APU to come up here, and then we will uh, hit the APU generators and just make sure that uh, we got the flight plan, everything correct in the uh, FMS or FMC, whatever you want to call it. Right, here we go. So, going to go ahead and flip the uh, APU gen in the on position, and we have a surplus now. So I just want to go and make sure I've got all my map settings uh, set the way I want them. Now, here is going to be the problem uh, when we come in. If you see this, uh, right from this VOR right here, it's got us a straight shot to 68 THR and then try to turn that. Um, here's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, you're supposed to come into the VOR and according to the uh, approach plate, uh, you should be at a radial for us of 053. So we should be coming out this way, and then once we get out here, which is ten and a half miles out from the VOR on DME, then you would make that turn to come inbound uh, at 2,500 feet to uh, pick up the ILS and then on the way in. So we're going to have a workaround with that, and we're going to use that VOR 
uh, in our nav radio today, so it's not so sharp of a turn, and we get the turn we're supposed to out of the GPS. So that's one of the things uh, that's not showing up properly on this approach, but we will show you how to work around that. And again, notice none of the uh, altitude restrictions are in there. So I showed you how to do that on the last video. I'm not going to talk you through everything today, uh, but I am going to enter these altitude restrictions. Okay, uh, I believe I got everything in now into the flight computer. All right. Let's board our passengers and get the Luke Air Tool running. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do was at that VOR that was a little hairy there, that it was a straight shot. That VOR channel is 117.2. Now that was a course of 53 out of that uh, VOR. Okay, 53 is set. Nav 2 radio is set up for the ILS. Switch back to FMS. And it looks like we're all set to go. Passengers are ready. Um, oh yes, the VNAV. So we're going to go down to the VNAV and turn that on. I have this set on so I can see uh, where my altitudes should be. Let's set our barrow. Set. Get some clearance going here. And yeah, we're going to try the ATC, so we'll see how it goes today. Sierra Bravo IFR to Aldergrove, ready to copy. Airlink is November 700, Sierra Bravo is cleared to Aldergrove Airport as filed. Take off runway 22 climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Departure frequency is 118.475 squawk 1326. Airlink is November 700, Sierra Bravo cleared to Aldergrove Airport as filed. Take off runway 22 climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Departure on 118.475 squawk 1326. Airlink is November 700, Sierra Bravo read back is correct. Contact ground on 121.73 when ready to taxi. Good day. Good day. All right, so I was just setting here the altitudes and my vertical speed so that once we get on the runway, we'll be good. So it looks like we're going to be taking off runway 22. Um, I can already go ahead and set this to 220. I will also post links down below for this Luke Air Tool as well. 220, so that should be the runway heading. We're going to go ahead and punch in the runway, or the heading. Hold, and let's see, we're also going to turn the vertical speed on. That's on. We've set our altitude. So that's pretty much it until we go ahead and hit the autopilot uh, once we take off. So let's get some engines going here. Now we've already set our barrel. We're using custom weather today. Uh, all we did was change the time, so the weather is the same outside, we just had to roll the time back just a bit. Hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. Let's go ahead and start up engine one. Everything is set. Once uh, this engine spools up, we'll go ahead and turn the gen on and uh, turn off the APU, and we can get out of here. So one of the biggest things uh, that I want everybody to kind of take out of this was that I got everything set up prior to me leaving. I I've thought of the path, 
I thought of that the GPS doesn't take you on the correct course. Let's call our tug. Ladies and gentlemen, before we commence our safety demonstration, I would ask if you are wearing headphones, please remove them at this time. We will now draw your attention to the safety features on board this aircraft. To fasten your seatbelt, insert the flashback lens into the buckle to secure it around your waist, but firmly on the strap and to open your seatbelt, lift the buckle cover. There are eight emergency exits, all of which are clearly marked by red and white exit signs. Floor pop lighting will guide you to these exits in poor visibility. There are two doors at the front of the cabin, one left and one right. Two doors at the back of the cabin, one left and one right. And in the centre of the cabin at rows 12 and 13, there are four overwing window exits, two on the left and two on the right. All exits must be clear of any cabin baggage for taxi takeoff and landing. Please take time now to locate the exit nearest you, bearing in mind it may be behind you. And in the event you should need to use one of these in an emergency, please leave all cabin baggage behind you. If the cabin pressure fails, an oxygen mask will be lowered automatically in front of you. Should this happen, stay in your seat, pull the mask down fully, cover your mouth and nose with the mask, secure it with the elastic strap and breathe normally. You must put on your own mask first before you attend to children or any other passengers. There is a life jacket in a package under every seat and if instructed by the crew to use this, you should take it out of this package and put the jacket over your head. The long strap should be wrapped around your waist to the front, clipped and pulled tightly. Each jacket has a light and a whistle for attracting attention and you inflate the jacket by pulling down sharply on the red tag hanging below the jacket in front. It may also be inflated by blowing through the rubber tube. Jackets must only be inflated once outside the aircraft. Finally, there is a safety information card in the seat pocket in front of you. It does contain important safety information. If it's a while since you have travelled with us, you are unfamiliar with this aircraft type, please study before departure. We would like to remind you that the use of any over-ear beats style headphones are not permitted for takeoff or for landing. We do thank you very much for your attention and of course wish you a pleasant and comfortable flight with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be dimming the cabin lights for takeoff and doing so again for landing them. And this is part of our normal safety procedure. Cabin crew to your stations for cabin security. Stand dead ground. Air link is November 700 Sierra Bravo with whiskey ready to taxi IFR. Air link is November 700 Sierra Bravo taxi to and hold short of runway due to using taxiway Bravo Hotel Romeo. Contact tower on 121 decimal nine or five five when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 22 via Taxiway Bravo Hotel Romeo Air Lingus November 700 Sierra Bravo. Tower Air Link is November 700 Sierra Bravo ready for IFR departure runway 22. Air Link is November 700 Sierra Bravo altimeter tray 0.09 or 1272 at 19 er Cleared for takeoff runway 22. Cleared for takeoff runway 22 Air Link is November 700 Sierra Bravo.
Positive right, gear is up. Auto throttles are armed. Autopilot is engaged. Go ahead and raise up the flaps. London Center Air Link is November 700 Sierra Bravo is passing 1,800 feet, climbing 10,000 feet. Air Link is November 700 Sierra Bravo, London Center altimeter 30 decimal 09 are continue as planned. Now the cool thing with this GPS is you have this little arc here that tells you uh, that we will reach 10,000 feet at this uh, ascent at this point. So if you wanted to track something or if you had to be somewhere at a specific time, Easy that's a good way to figure that out. So I just have my speed here set to uh, 210 knots and I have activated the auto throttle here and engaged the auto throttle by hitting this little button right on the side of the uh, throttle stick here. So it's not the one up here, this is the toga button. It's right on the back side right here. So that's how you engage the auto throttle. This arms the auto throttle up here. It's right here on the back side of the eight, uh, outer knob. And we're just monitoring the SID here. Uh, 4,000 feet is where we need to be. Logan 657, you are 35 miles northwest. Descend and maintain 5,000 feet. Expect ILS runway due to approach by a lateral transition. Clear to lateral. So as you can see, you can control your ascent here just using your vertical speed. And uh, it doesn't really matter. You can leave that set for your main achievable altitude. And then along the way, if you got a step, if you have to step up along the way, you can do so and just use your vertical speed and do that. Darling is November 700, Sierra Bravo, please expedite your climb 10,000 feet. Looks like we have somebody right in front of us. It must be above us. Okay, so if I want to be at 10,000 when we get the buzz ad, all I would have to do. is put that arc right on buzzad. So as you see, we're climbing too fast, so I can go ahead and turn my vertical speed down and it pushes that arc out. And right about there, we should be at buzzad right at 10,000 feet. Alright, so we got a, forgot to turn on the pedo heat, so we're going to do that, and uh, we're also going to turn on the wing anti-ice and the engines, uh, being that we're going through some clouds here. Yeah, the outside air temperature is pretty cold, so... And we're still maintaining that 210 knots, so I really like that feature on this plane, uh, that you can use uh, auto throttle. 
the CJ4, uh, that's one of the things that I really wish that would add uh, was auto throttle, but uh, heck, it's got a lot of other cool features, so we'll take a look at that plane in a future episode. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about the uh, Luke Air Tool. Uh, if you've used it or you like it, uh, hit that thumbs up button. Just let me know. Now, one of the things that I did with the camera on this plane, the camera generally is really pushed up like this. So I'm going to show you this real quick. If you go to general options and you go to camera, you can zoom out. So if you look uh, at the display behind this, you'll see the camera zooming in and out. So you can set the camera to pull back a little bit. All right. So we've already set our minimums for the airport that we're arriving at. So we have all of the nav radios programmed, so I think we're uh, in pretty good shape right now. Power's good. Fuel burn is okay. Once we get a little bit higher, uh, we will start accelerating once we get over 10,000 feet. We'll uh, turn off the landing lights and get this baby cranking. Open her up. Pedal to the metal. Oh, yeah. But the scenery does look pretty good. And if anybody wants to know uh, what my graphics settings are, mostly everything is on high. Clouds are set on ultra, texture synthesis on ultra, and um, I'm also using 200 on the uh, LOD, so the uh, level of detail. And that's it. I was able to switch back to the uh, regular gaming driver now. Every so often I get a little crash here and there and it's kind of weird because then I'll start it right back up again and it doesn't happen. So there's no rhyme or reason to when it happens. It's really weird. All right, so let's look down here at the GPS. We want to be at 10,000 at BuzzAd and it looks like we are just about there. So that's how you kind of navigate uh, with using that arc. It's something like a uh, vertical navigation. The thing that really helps out is having this down here uh, so that I can uh, see what my next stepped altitude is. They haven't given us clearance yet to get above 10,000, so we're not going to worry about it quite yet. Contact Luton Tower on 132 decimal 555 when inbound on the approach. Climb and maintain flight level 220. Air link is November 700 Sierra Bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned up the fastened seatbelt sign, and you may now move around the cabin. However, we always recommend to keep your seatbelt fastened while you're seated. Good day. Senior 133, eat habit traffic.
So now the cool thing is uh, once we get up there, this is going to then populate with our vertical speed target that we're going to be coming down to like 10,000 feet, I believe, until we're programmed in. So uh, we'll see how all this works. Hopefully you get a little bit of information about uh, how to use the VNAV in the longitude. And maybe you'll make your flight a little bit easier. So we don't have to calculate everything by hand. 18,000, we're going to go ahead and switch into standard mode. Okay. That's a bit high, but climb and maintain flight level three two zero airling is November seven zero zero Sierra Bravo. And there goes the Texas Beach Services. How many of you have that problem? Hit the thumbs up button on that one. Okay, I just went and turned the uh, ATC voices down, so hopefully they're not too loud. like we will just pass TNT and reach our 42,000 feet. Again, it's pretty high, but uh, we'll see. We're also going to switch into mock mode. Should have done that a while ago. Well, anybody that wanted to get a view from this high up, you can see what the graphics look like from uh, where we at, 38,000 feet, on our way to 42,000. They're taking us out into space here or something. Okay, we're creeping up here at 42,000 feet. Airline is November 700, Sierra Bravo climb and maintain flight level 430. Three miles. 
Here's a good test if anybody wanted to know how high the longitude can fly. Well, here you go. Pretty high up there. Descent and maintain flight level 430 Well, they haven't got the ATC worked out yet. Alright. Descent and maintain flight level 340 Air Lingus November 700 Sierra Bravo. Ryan Air 562, you are 49 miles west. Descent and maintain 10,000 feet. Expect ILS runway 23 right approach via Mike Charlie Tango transition. Clear to Mike Charlie Tango. Alright, so now you can see the VNAV profile had just started to populate in. Uh, the next altitude that we want to reach in our uh, flight plan here is that 8000 level right here at ROBOP. And then IPSET is 8000. So we want to try to get to 8000 uh, when we get there. To do that, here is our vertical speed required, 2218 to uh, get to that. So as you see, we're going to have to uh, increase our rate of descent a little bit. And we're just gonna put it up to what it says. So we're at 2250. This is the uh, vertical speed required. Time to bottom of descent to get to that 8,000 feet at ROBOP is 14 minutes and 46 seconds at this current speed and at the current descent rate. So if you come down here and also hit the VNAV button, uh, it will also give you some of the exact same information. Uh, this would be the first uh, hard deck uh, altitude that we wanted to reach, uh, and we're trying to keep the flight path. Well, right now we're at uh, 3.27 degrees. You can change that if you would like. Um, I just left it alone. I didn't change. I don't know how it got to that. Uh, and then again, this will be your vertical speed required, the time to bottom of descent, and the vertical deviation. Uh, from where you need to be and where you are. So if you look on the screen right now, we have a VNAV profile that is populated. So as you can see, we're going to raise. So it's almost like an ILS. So as you see this little uh, magenta arrow here, uh, you really want to have that down here. So that tells us we're a little below the glide path right now. And according to the uh, vertical deviation, we are 520 feet below that glide path. Right here, there's another magenta line, and that's the actual vertical speed that you want to try to get to. But we're a little bit less than that right now because we want to try to get back on glide path uh, where the VNAV system is. And then we can uh, turn this vertical speed. You see how it turns? We can then put it right on that magenta line. But we want to get down a little bit uh, for, actually, we are down. We want to get up a little bit higher so that we can get in line with this V path first. Then we will go ahead and adjust to the proper uh, descent again. So I hope that made a little bit of sense to everybody. 
of how to use this VNAV system on here. That's why I really like this up here. It's really handy because it shows me all the legs, the altitudes we're going to be at uh, once we pass these uh, waypoints. Looks like we are coming up a bit. We're almost right on with the uh, V-Path glide slope, I'll call it. And that magenta line is coming down. So that's perfect. Alright, looks like we're almost right on glide path right now. And we're just about at that 30, uh, they wanted us to be at 34,000. Yep, we're just about, so now we're over glide path. We're going to go ahead and Yep, there it is. So now we're going to turn down to that near there. Hit the vertical speed again. And as you see, we're a little bit high. So we're just going to get on this magenta line right there. Set our vertical speed to that. And if you look over here, required 2339. Put it right there and that should hopefully get us up so here's the difference the required speed is to get this to where it needs to be the target speed is what you should be uh, uh, trying to attain on the glide path itself now because we're way above this right now it's telling us hey you need to go faster down to get this to come up and that's essentially what we're doing so I might actually go down a little bit faster than what it's telling me, just so that we can get this uh, to populate up a little bit faster. The other thing you can do is come back on the speed a bit, and that will also bring this up sooner. Now remember this uh, V glide path is getting us down to that 4,000 feet, which is our uh, transition at Bell here. Um, and also the prior one uh, will be 8,000. So it's getting us down to this 8,000 uh, that we need to be at for Ipset so that we can get down to 4,000 at Bell. And we're over speeding a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and put on some speed brakes. All right, so we're still a little bit above. We're going to increase the descent a little bit so that uh, we can get back lined up with this magenta line. So uh, using the VDAV in this plane is a great way to uh, get you down to altitude without you having to do a lot of calculations to do so. Uh, all you have to do is enter your flight restrictions in Again, which you can get off of either little nav map or you can get them right off of the approach plates. Okay, this looks beautiful here. Zoom in a little bit. All right, so as we get closer, uh, we're gonna have to start talking about that outbound radio of the VOR uh, for our final approach. Uh, we should be closing on that soon. It looks like we're right on glide path right here. Beautiful. Now before I forget, I'm just going to come up here and turn on my landing lights now. I know we need to be down at 8,000 feet, so I'm just going to go ahead and punch that in now. I'm 
gonna start our descent because ATC hasn't got them. There they are. Alright, so as you can see, uh, we are a little bit high, but we are making up some of that headway uh, because of our vertical speed. We're also going to start pull it back on the speed dial itself. And that will also help make up some uh, distance here. Okay, and again, if anybody has any questions uh, throughout this flight, uh, please post them below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can for you. Hope you're enjoying the video and I hope you're getting some good information out of this flight. I know uh, it can be a little boring up here in the air. so. Uh, Thanks for sticking with us if you're still with us. And hopefully everybody gets a good understanding on how this VNAV system works. Now it's a really handy tool again if, if you use it properly. Now in conjunction with the VNAV you can also cross check yourself with your arcs. And uh, this arc is right there right before ROBOP so we should be perfectly good. As you see the magenta line is starting to come up. Our next uh, flight restriction is 4,000 so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put 4,000 into the uh, altitude right now. And we're just going to maintain that glide path. So here are some flap extended speeds here, if you didn't know that uh, they were there. Uh, 250 knots gear extended operating 230 knots. So you can put your flaps down at 250 if you have your gear down 230. Full everything at 180 knots. So it's a little handy tool there. Okay, so we're just coming up on our 8,000, and as you see, our little uh, magenta line has gone way up here now. So we're just controlling with our vertical speed to keep us right at 8,000 uh, once we get to uh, Ipset here. And I believe as soon as we pass Ipset, the next VNAV uh, should populate in here, which is at Bell 4000. Top of descent, we should be there in four minutes. We will start our descent again.
Niner Decimal 875 Airlink is November 700 Sierra Bravo. Scottish Center Airlink is November 700 Sierra Bravo. Hey, we Sierra got our uh, voices back. Airlink is November 700 Sierra Bravo. Scottish Center Altimeter 30 Decimal 12 continue to D127 PS plan. See it right here. It's going to show you the next uh, flight restriction level that we have programmed. The magenta line looks like it's starting to come down, and you'll see that magenta line there. So we got our 4,000 descent clearance. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Airlink is November 700 Sierra Bravo. Time to top of descent is three minutes still. So now it looks like on here it does have that arc uh, that we wanted to take. So we're still going to use our nav uh, way and let's try that out. So what I wanted to tell you, uh, the angle of attack right here, the slower this plane gets, you're going to notice the angle of attack is going to start coming up. And that means that the plane is no longer going to be flying straight, it's going to be flying with a nose up pitch. So what you would want to do to get your angle of attack, if it starts climbing a little too much, say if you start decreasing more speed, is to go ahead and put down one notch of flaps down here. And you are more than capable of doing so because you're fine up to 250 knots. And we will start our descent uh, once we get to the TOD right here. I really want to use this VNAV for everybody and show you uh, how it works. So. Hopefully everybody's enjoying the video so far. And how about it for that Luke Air Tool? They seem to be doing a great job with everybody back there. So once we get a little bit closer, I am going to slow down to probably about 180 knots. This way we don't start overshooting a bunch of turns here. And that'll really help us out. All right, we are coming up on the top of descent right now. It looks like we're going to reach it in 28 seconds. And on our traffic map, we do have some traffic out there to our left. They must be either really high or really low. And we're going to take a little dip ski right below these clouds here shortly. And as you see, our magenta line is coming down into the center. Now to switch that VOR frequency, we're just going to hit the VOR nav source, which is right here. And that should change it for us. As you can see, we have all of the DMEs populated in, so we're about 11.3 miles from Bell, uh, which is the VOR that we're going to be taking that 5.3 radial out of. So what I want to do to make sure I have everything set up is we're going to switch into heading hold mode, and then I'm going to switch into FMS mode, I'm sorry, VOR mode. And I'm going to make sure that our course is properly set in there, and it is. That's perfect. So, uh, because that is set up properly, I'm going to now switch back to FMS mode and switch back into nav mode. And that was a way for me to just verify and double check um, that we're going to be on the right course here. So again, uh, once we make this right, we want to get about 10.5 miles out and then we're going to start making that turn. Then we will switch into localizer and hopefully uh, land this bird. And I'm not paying attention, am I? Alright, here we go down. I should have had us a lot sooner than that. I passed our top of descent. That's what happens when you get to talking. All right, we're closing. We will be at 4,000 before Bell. 
And again, I'm able to know that because of this little blue arc right there. It's right before Bell. I'm also going to turn back our speeds now. Now that we're on descent, and I'm going to crank them back to about 180 knots. And I'm going to go ahead and apply one layer of flap. We can also then go ahead and put that 2,500 feet in. Because as long as we stay on this glide path, um, we'll be fine. All right, we're going to switch to Nav 1. what can happen, you'll overshoot. So that's why you don't want to go too, too fast. Now we're going to add a little bit of speed brake to get our speed down. Alright, so we are directly on path uh, right where we are supposed to be at that course out of that VOR. Now we're going to also monitor the distance. Uh, we want to be at ten and a half miles out. So by adding those flaps it allows us to still maintain our angle of attack here and we're going to be turning back a little bit more uh, on the speed here. Just monitoring the distance on our DME. We are 6.7 miles out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over into heading hold mode. So I'm going to lock the heading. I'm going to press on the button once to now lock us uh, to set our current heading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn us with the heading hold. And the reason is because I want the localizer to uh, pick up on VOR2. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch us into heading hold now. We're going to go ahead and switch us into nav mode 2 right now. And we can still see how far we are away from the VOR. So we're still on course. Now all we're going to do is once we hit that 10 nautical miles, 10 and a half out, I'm going to start my turn. The localizer has already got it in here. So you can see we're off a little bit. And we're going to start our turn now.
All right, now as you can see, the localizer is now coming in. So we're gonna start turning to intercept that localizer. And once we get on the localizer path, we're gonna go ahead and switch us into nav mode right up here. All right, so we're gonna hit nav mode now. And it should turn us in on this localizer and it has. Now we're gonna hold off on hitting that approach button over here until the glide slope starts coming down. Once the glide slope comes down a little bit here, once it comes almost in the center, then we will go ahead and hit the, hit the approach and it should intercept the glide path. But you wanna be uh, lined up on your localizer first before you're gonna hit the approach and uh, because a lot of times the computer system needs to get a lock on the localizer before it can lock on the glide slope. All right, so there is our airport right out ahead. We're still monitoring that glide slope coming down. Our angle of attack is perfect now that we have that second layer of flaps. And now that we are just about ready to intercept that glide slope, we're gonna hit the approach button. You're gonna see GS come up here on the top of our autopilot, that's for glide slope, and we are now gonna follow this glide slope in. We're now gonna start bringing back the throttle to get to our approach speeds. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add full flaps now. Now I'm gonna get us close to our approach speed. Um, and then once we get a little bit closer to the runway, I will then take over manual throttle and get us in our myself. That looks like we have a 16 knot wind coming off of our left-hand side here, right out of the south, south-southwest, according to this map. So we're right on uh, glide slope. We're a little bit above approach, and I'm getting ready to disengage auto throttle right now. Throttle is in my control. I'm not gonna disengage autopilot just yet. Uh, looking at the uh, Pappy lights down here, we have two red and two white. A little more throttle. Gears down, checks. I'm going to turn off autopilot and we are now on our own. Approaching decision height.
All right, folks, we have now landed. We're gonna go ahead and turn our taxi lights on so we can taxi in to the parking. Flaps are up. Looks like some weather happening over here. Links will also be below in the description for the airport uh, that we're at right now. Uh, and the developer has a couple other airports, and by the looks of things, it is a very gorgeous setup as well. So go down there and check that out. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. This way you won't miss any of our future videos. There we are. There we go. Hey everyone, I want to thank everybody for joining us here today at 2020 Flight Simmers and Air Lingus. It's been a pleasure serving everybody today. As always, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks everybody.